Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of the Shell Nuts. In this episode, we're headed down to the Florida Keys to try to find shells in a place where it's typically kind of tough to find shells. We're going to try finding shells in two different ways. We're going to first stop at some of the just local beaches and along the bridges along the highway and walk along some of those beaches and see if we can find some things in, in, in those locations. It's pretty easy to do, right? The second way we're going to try to find shells is we're going to hop in the boat and go out to some of the remote keys and look on some of the beaches on those remote keys and see if we can find any shells there. And then we're also going to cruise along in the boat in some of the shallower water and just look down and see if we see any as we're cruising along. We've actually had good success in the past doing that. Do we find any shells finding shells this way? Well, guess you'll have to tune in and find out. Okay, our shelling quest in the Florida Keys begins with doing it the easy way, just stopping along some of the beaches and parks and bridges uh, along the US-1, you know, that takes you through the Keys and just seeing if anything has washed up there. A lot of people will tell you that you're not going to find much that way. A lot of them are right. Um, it depends a lot on the conditions before you got there. Was there a storm or not? Um, but I did decide to just look for myself. And I stopped at different locations. I walked around some of these tide pools, tried to see if I would find anything in, in the various locations, either on the beach and in the tide pools. And while there was plenty of beauty and great views to be had, uh, as expected, there weren't a lot of shells to be found, har hardly any for that matter. Um, real pretty uh, watermelon peel there, but uh, no shells. Uh, but I Continue to look um, again, beautiful place, right? You, you're out walking around in this stuff. You're, you, you're still having a good time, even if you're not finding any shells. Tried stopping at this location. Also, the coral was uh, a lot different here, or not, not the coral, but just the rocks. Uh, it's not coral, uh, very jagged. So you don't want to trip and fall while you're walking around on this stuff. But um, again, I'm looking around. Um, I do spot something here, I think. Looks like a little shell. I think it's some form of a uh, let's see here. That looks like, oh, some mollusk. I couldn't, can't identify, but again, it was broken and it was very old and it wasn't worth keeping. So no loss there on the identification. Um, but yeah, just kept walking around hoping you would think you would see shells. Uh, but the only thing I really found was this cute little baby nurse shark just sitting there chilling out. Um, but other than that, that was really all that I found. So all the stories of people saying you're not going to find shells along the road, well, they're kind of right. And a lot of times when you're walking along the road, you'll find a lot of this seaweed and it can be a little smelly. Uh, and I'm certainly not gonna dig through that seaweed and look underneath it and see if I find any shells there. But again, if you if you went here, and I think I find a little bit of a, a little star snail here, it's probably missing all of its little spines that create kind of that star pattern. But uh, I also checked at the south end of the Seven Mile Bridge. It's so cool the way that bridge just goes off to into the horizon. Um, so I checked along the base, the south base of it, and just to see if there were any shells hanging out in this area, and uh, didn't really find anything. Uh, it's beautiful, and there's some real beautiful, colorful parrotfish swimming around down there. Some of my favorite fish in the Keys. The colors on those guys are amazing. Um, but you just never know. You might look down and see a shell there. I'd certainly hop in and go grab it if I saw something down there. But unfortunately, I didn't really see much down there. Now I'm on the south side of the bridge. Well, south, we'll call it the southwest side. And uh, on this side, it's a little different. There's some big boulders on this side. Really kind of impossible to find shells there. So I quickly hopped out of that area and walked a little further around to the south where there was a little beach. There's a little park. And so I checked, you know, around on the on the beach of this park. And again, 
not really much. So completely validating what most people say on the, on the forums on the internet that you're really not going to find any shells unless there was a big storm, you know, several days before and it, it blew stuff up on the beach. There's a couple of white little plain bivalves out there, but uh, small and nothing, nothing worth keeping. So I just kind of moved on, discovered uh, Florida Keys Stonehenge here. This was this is pretty spectacular. Uh, but yeah, again, another beach that really just didn't have much on it. Um, so so my last attempt at roadside shelling took me to a beach that my wife and I have stopped at many times. It's not really a beach. It's just a little park with a little bridge. It's kind of off the beaten path. And we know there are shells here. We have found some beautiful shells here in the past. We found some beautiful true tulips, a, a pretty queen angel juvenile, and two beautiful Caribbean vases. And uh, sure enough, when I stopped here, I started finding shells again. But... Um, most of the shells here are, are inhabited. It's always that way uh, throughout the Keys. A lot of the shells you find are going to be inhabited. The hermit crabs love to set up shop and a lot of the shells. You can see I found a crown conch. Now I have found a lace murex. And th those shells would have cleaned up beautifully if you just dip them in bleach for a little bit, a little bleach water mixture. Here's another little snail shell that's inhabited. These shells that I'm finding, I'm seeing hermit crabs inside of them. So of course I'm putting them back. And uh, here you can see a pretty true tulip and you got to look really closely. Sometimes those hermit crabs are way up in there. But again, this one uh, was was taken um, at first. I thought it wasn't. But then later it, it, the hermit crab popped up and I saw him. So I did put that one back. And then this one I knew for sure was inhabited. But we there's true tulips all over the place at this little this little park little area. Uh, and uh, again, here's another real pretty tu tulip. These tulips, they Again, you dip them in a little bleach water mixture, they turn out real pretty, but again, it's hard to find ones that are empty. Uh, we've been here five, six times, and maybe we find one that's not inhabited, and that's how we came up with the six or seven shells that we found. Real colorful uh, shell there, real pretty. Got the purples and pinks on it, but again, uh, it's alive. Go ahead and put that back. Um, but again, I'm going to keep walking along here, and here we go. One of the best shells I've ever found really and truly beautiful queen conch is it alive do I get to keep it oh it's look at that orange oh, it's spectacular but it is alive it's a real live queen conch of course it's completely illegal to take those into Florida Keys you get in big trouble but even if there was a hermit crab in there I wouldn't keep it but boy that would have cleaned up and been a, just a spectacular shell look how beautiful that is with that pink and yellow and orange those queen conchs are just amazing. It's called a roller because it hasn't developed its lip, and without its big lip, it can kind of roll along. I think that's where it gets that nickname from. But I'm going to put that back, and I'm going to keep looking because maybe I'll find an empty one. I have found empty ones in the past. I found one empty one in the past, and here's another one. Please, please, please be empty. Please be empty. Oh, no, he's alive as well. So, again, so pretty, those colors on the inside, and they clean up so pretty, but... It's so nice to see living shells. You know, you can always appreciate neat nature and you don't have to bring home a trophy. I just love finding shells, period. My wife does too. Uh, so again, we don't mind putting them back. It's just kind of fun to find them. That's what's, it's the hunt a lot of times that's the fun. You don't always have to have trophies, but you can still enjoy shelling. So that was a true tulip that was pretty damaged. Here's a true tulip that's not damaged. It's in pretty shape. It's got a little bit growing on it, but that would have cleaned up, but uh, again, this guy was inhabited, so uh, checked real closely, and yep, there's one in there. You might not see it in the video, but trust me, I wouldn't have put it back if I didn't <laughs> notice the, the hermit crab living in it. So moving right along, this is the biggest murex I've ever found. It is huge, and again, it looks kind of ugly, but boy, they clean up, and they're beautiful once you just soak them a little bit. And this was huge, absolutely huge, and I was like, no, there's a hermit crab down in there. Uh, so I had to put it back, but uh, wow, what a cool murex, how big that was. I believe that's an apple murex. Um, so let that go on its merry way. Let's see what else we find. Oh, another queen conch, another opportunity here. And oh, again, it's alive. It's a great little habitat for juvenile queen conchs. They must really like it here. I think they congregate here because other things are here and they get to eat those other things and it turns into a, a little ecosystem and a nice little food chain for all the, the different uh, mollusks in the area. And here we have a hawkwing conch, another species of conch in this area, but it's pretty damaged. And even in, though it's damaged, it's still inhabited. So wasn't going to keep that one anyway, but 
continuing along, finding a lot of cool shells here. And here's a great example of just how many true tulips are in the area. And another example of how many of them are inhabited. This one is clinging to the side of the rock by because it's got a hermit crab inside of it. So it's alive. And we got another one right next to it. And it's alive too. And uh, the hermit crabs love those true tulips because they're very lightweight shells and yet they're very strong. So it's easy for them to walk around and do things in those shells. They absolutely love them. So um, you can see they're all over the place. There's another real pretty one, but again, that one's inhabited. I can see it clinging to a little stick there and moving around. So anyway, just cool to see all the shells. Uh, last chance at, at, at an empty one, a queen conch. Oh, again, it's inhabited by, by the conch itself. But again, great to see. Great to see all these shells. They're all doing well. And that was a lot of fun. So let's try shelling a different way. Let's try by boat. The shelling by roadside didn't really work out. So let's jump in the boat and let's head out to one of the outer keys in the, in the, uh, the back country. This is on the Gulf side of the keys. This is one of the outer keys and the, and the, and the lower keys near Sugarloaf. And, uh, first thing I like to do or we like to do is uh, cruise around and, and look in the water. And by the way, if you're wondering why my wife isn't with me on this trip, it's uh, I had to go, I had to use the boat. The boat had been sitting for so long and this was one of the first good weather days where I could go and I was finally feeling better from COVID and she just wasn't able to go. She doesn't get much time off from work, but we like to, when she, I wish she was with us. Here she found a shell and here I, uh, she found another shell by cruising along in the boats. And those shells, that horse conch and the two milk conchs that we find when we cruise along like this, they clean up beautifully. And so we have found lots of beautiful shells uh, shelling this way. And you just cruise along and if you see a shell, you just throw the anchor, <laughs> jump in the water and grab it. The water's clearly not deep. And uh, you'd be surprised how productive this is. Um, and you can be surprised how unproductive it is too sometimes because on this day, I'm on my own just cruising along. Uh, it's gorgeous, crystal clear. You can see lots of stuff. I saw plenty of fish and different types of marine life. But unfortunately on this trip, didn't really find any shells. Again, the wind had been calm for many days before this trip and uh, for the most part. And so there wasn't really any waves or anything that would cause maybe shells to wash up. So not finding much out here. So it's time to park the boat. Uh, near it as close to the island as I can jump in and kind of walk on over to this island and see if anything has washed up so got the anchor out got the ladder out just gonna head over to the beach look how beautiful it is folks I mean I had the place all to myself it was so quiet you could hear a fish fart I mean it was amazing and even if I don't find any shells I mean you're on this deserted island all by yourself totally wishing my wife was with me of course but it's really amazing. It's great for the soul to be able to walk around and find these places. And who cares if you don't find any shells or if you do, it's just, it's wonderful. So, but I'm a sheller, I'm looking for shells. And uh, again, it's, it's beautiful. And uh, I, we've shelled here before uh, doing it this way. We haven't really found much, but again, you just, it's always worth trying, right? I mean, look how nice it is. So let's dig in and see what we find on this island. So first up, we have what I believe is some form of a, a leucine. Um, uh, again, all these shells, they're always a little bit dirty. They got a little bit of stuff growing on them, but you just dip them in, in a little bit of water bleach for a few minutes and they clean right up. And that's a nice hinged leucine of some type. Uh, I'm going to move right along. I'm going to move a little bit inland. Um, I'm going to try just different spots. Try along the water's edge. Try moving in, maybe walking along further in maybe something's gotten pushed in that nobody's found you know a long time ago and I'm gonna go check in the mangroves see if anything's in there um, and uh, didn't really find much in there at all um, but again it's worth looking you just never know what what might have you know washed up in there and of course it's kind of pretty it's a really neat habitat um, the the uh, the mangroves are just kind of amazing how they can uh, use the sunlight to filter out the salt from the water and, and get the fresh water the way they do. Um, whenever the hurricanes come along and knock all the leaves off, it's a catastrophic event for these poor mangrove trees because then they can't filter that salt out. Um, but um, a lot of these are in great shape. It's great to see. Some of the islands got torn up, but these, these look pretty good and they're doing a great job of filtering that fresh water. And, but unfortunately I didn't find anything there. 
But before we go any further, let's turn the mic off and spend a few seconds to enjoy the tranquility of this amazing day. So I moved back out into the water in some of the tide pools. This is another, uh, some form of a leucine. It's got, uh, it's a little different than some of the species you'll find in other, in other spots in Florida because it's got kind of radial spines instead of kind of the horizontal. And here's an actual shell. What do we got here? We've, I don't want to say an actual, more, more special shell. Um, this looks like a true tulip, but it's busted up, unfortunately. Um, darn, uh, it's actually empty. What do you know? But it's missing the tip and it's pretty faded, so. But up next, we have something pretty cool, something never found before. Here we have what I believe is a West Indian top snail, and have never found one of these before. My wife hasn't either. It's a brand new species, and whenever I have found a new species, it's a great day. So right now, I'm just checking to make sure it's not alive. It looks like there's a little tiny shell in there. I'm just trying to really wash it off and rinse it uh, vigorously here to just empty it out and make sure it's not alive. And sure enough, it's not. Yes, I get to keep it. I'm so happy. Great day. Uh, I know many of you probably already found a lot of these, but this is first time. And whenever you find a shell for the first time, it's a pretty special moment. And here's a little piece of a sea urchin. Um, we found some, some pretty nice big pieces of both green and purple sea urchin. Can't wait to find a whole one one day. This is a beautiful, I, I, I don't know if this is soft coral or if it's just some other sort of marine life, but it was a beautiful red. It really stood out. And I think you can keep those and they dry up and they're real pretty. And then this, I want to guess, is a piece of sea pork. It's just the most brightest red, almost looks like a human organ. It's kind of scary, but uh, kind of cool how bright red that is. I think that's sea pork, so, but I no need to keep that. Here's a little um, stone crab. He's got a lot of growing up to do, but he's just chilling in his tide pool waiting for something to come along. And uh, here we have another, I think this is a star. Uh, shell. It's it's a, sn a snail type. Uh, it, it loses its. It's lost its spine, so you can't really see the star pattern that it creates. The radial pattern, but uh, lots of those down there. And when you ble once you bleach them, they turn out real pretty. Uh, so I kept that one. And this looks like a, some form of a colorful prickly cockle, but it's real small. And then uh, here's an even smaller. This is either some tiny cowrie or some sort of little snail. But here's the best shell I found on this beach. Other than that West Indian top snail, here is a Caribbean vase, a nice big one, but it's alive. And it's kind of cool because it's the first live one I've ever found. Um, so it's neat to see a live one and kind of see what they look like alive. But that's a really nice shell, but it's alive. I'm going to put him back, and, uh, but it's cool to find that guy. So, so that's really it for trying to shell by uh, not getting in the water. In part two, of, uh, it'll be a ne another episode, we're going to jump in the water and we're gonna look for shells under the water. This is actually the best way to find shells, and we're hoping the second episode will get a lot more content, we'll find a lot more shells, and it'll be, a much, it'll be a much longer episode, and we'll have this great batch of shells to show you. I've seen some videos, some other videos from other folks on YouTube where they went in and snorkeled, and they found a lot of great shells. So we look forward to jumping in the water also and presenting that as part two of this two-part series of shelling in the Florida Keys. Thanks for watching everyone, we appreciate it.